Hey guys, in this video, we're going to work on data analysis and analyze real data. So that's fun. We'll consider a Kaggle dataset on global world terrorism. Their dataset consists of 170,000 terrorist attacks across the globe by various terrorist organizations documented from 1970 to 2016. In case you're wondering, yes, that is a lot of data. So instead of just boiling the ocean at the surface, we're going to delve deep into a single aspect and see what conclusions we can draw. Before we start the analysis, I'll start importing the required tools. We'll be using Python 3.6, along with some cool libraries. We'll use matplotlib to display graphs and charts, NLTK, Natural Language Processing Toolkit, to deal with text data. In NLTK, we also include the punct sentence tokenizer to split a paragraph into constituent sentences. And we also have the regex parser to perform chunking of words to recognize key phrases. More on this later. Other useful libraries that we use are NumPy, Python's library for mathematical operations. Operator, only used once for dictionary sort. Pandas, which deals with data storage and manipulation in the form of data frames. And we have Seaborn, the library that generates scatter plots, box plots, histograms, and bar charts throughout. We now read the CSV file into the data frame and display the first five rows for reference. In the read CSV function, I include a low memory argument to prevent mixed types assigned to a given column. It is advised to use the dtype argument and specify the type for each column name. However, since there are 135 columns in this dataset, most of which I don't know about, I'm going to use a lazy approach and set low memory to false. Pulling this data up on Excel, we see that half of them are numerically encoded column values while the others are text forms of the same. Looking at this data, I feel like I can answer a number of questions. Some things like, where exactly have the terrorist attacks taken place? Or in this region, can we plot a time series chart to show how much terrorism has increased or decreased? Can we analyze a summary to understand more details not specified by other columns? What was the nature of terrorist attacks in a particular state or country over the years? Who or what is the largest target of their assault? Can we get more details about the target of their assault, like what exactly was the type of institution being targeted? Can we analyze the motive and understand exactly why these terrorist attacks were carried out? What weapons were used in the assault? Can we get more details on the exact weapons? What was the overall price of the property destroyed? Who were these terrorists? What property was actually destroyed? In the kidnapping situations, were the hostages released? Can we analyze additional notes and see what other data we can infer? These are just a handful of questions that I just came up with. We can possibly find more questions just given time. It's easy to get lost in this wealth of data, so like I mentioned before, we focus on a single aspect instead of boiling the ocean. In this video, we are going to cycle four steps. We'll state a question, take a look at the code to find the solution, analyze the result, and move on. I still haven't told you what single aspect I'm about to analyze. I'll get to that in a moment though. For now, consider our first question. Which countries are the most targeted? The code provides extracting the country underscore txt column, which has the country where the attack took place. This returns a panda series object. We then compute the frequency distribution of this object using value counts. Since there's a lot of countries, I only display the ones where over 2,000 attacks have taken place. So that's the code. At the top of the list, we have Iraq with over 22,000 documented cases of terrorism. Let's focus on terrorist attacks in Iraq. Now on to the next question. Who exactly is responsible for these atrocities in Iraq? The code is just extracting all the tuples where the country is Iraq. This is about 22,000. From the result, we extract the single column G name, which is the gang name or the name of the terrorist organization. Like before, this is the pandas series object on which we can perform a frequency distribution. We only display the top 10 gangs or terrorist organizations. The Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, ISIL or ISIS tops this list. Now, let's create an objective. 
In this video, we will see what can be inferred about ISIL's actions in Iraq. I choose ISIS because it's easy to verify our findings through online sources. Now that we have defined an objective, we can just extract ISIS Iraq data in the beginning, so we don't have to keep specifying the conditions later. So how has ISIS's influence varied over the years in Iraq? The code involves just extracting the year in a series object and then drafting the frequency distribution, like we've done before. At first, I found it strange that ISIS had its first attacks in 2013 in Iraq. After all, it was established in 1999, so you would expect some cases in Iraq before then, but I found out that they refer to themselves by different names over the years. In April 2013, the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, or modern ISIL, was founded. Based on these numbers, their activity is clearly on the incline. So next question. How many people has ISIS killed over the years in Iraq? Has it increased or has it decreased? Now the code. I know the first attacks in Iraq are in 2013, so I loop over the years. For each year, I determine the number of people killed by summing up the number of people killed in all individual attacks that year. Drop NA will ignore the values that are not recorded or entries with the NAN. As for the result, clearly ISIL has become more active in the number of attacks and fatalities. What kind of attacks does ISIL usually go with in Iraq? In the data frame, the kind of attack is in the column attack type 1 underscore txt. So we create a frequency distribution out of it. Looks like ISIS is a fan of bombs and explosives. That's great. What's more, they use this method of attack for nearly two thirds of their attacks in Iraq. Hostage taking is also common in the form of kidnapping. Barricading involves trapping a group of people. It's harder to accomplish, which is probably why it's also not a common method of attack. Let's take a look at the 12 barricade incidents. We'll extract three columns. The first is success, that is a boolean column indicating whether the attack was successful 1 or not, 0. And kill is the number of people killed in the attack. Prof state, the province or the state where the attack took place. I extract the data frame of these three fields for all barricade incidents. We'll also plot a histogram while we're at it using Seaborn's Displot. Displot creates a histogram and a bar graph on the same plot. Looks like all the barricade attempts were a success. That's not good. From the numbers in the table, Baghdad seems to be hit pretty hard by these type of attacks. Next question. Who are the targets for the kidnappings? For the code, we create the frequency distribution of target type. Private citizens and the police and the military are their primary targets. Can we get some more intel on exactly what private citizens and property represents? The target subtype 1 column provides us more detail. So we generate a frequency distribution of this column for all attacks where the target was private citizens and property. Of the specified kidnappings of citizens, we had 25 cases involving general laborers. Who exactly constituted these targeted laborers? The code involves extracting a panda series object consisting of the exact targeted laborers whose type is private citizens and property, and the subtype is a general laborer, and where the type of attack was kidnapping. We create a frequency distribution of the series using value counts, as we have done before. So the most documented targeted individuals are suspected spies and informants. I use the term documented because 150 of 200 private citizens and property targeted are unknown. How does ISIL deal with other terrorist groups and non-state militia? The code involves extracting all attack types where the target type was terrorist or non-state militias. And like we did with all other series objects in the past, we come up with a frequency distribution. ISIL deals with terrorist groups and militias like any other. Bombs, armed assault, kidnapping, and assassination. Among their terrorist enemies, who do they assassinate? If we take a look at the nature of target data, each entry has a designation followed by a name separated by a colon. 
In order to make this more generic, I will extract the designation and create a frequency distribution. The apply function will take a function as an argument and is executed for every column. In this case, the inline function will take the entry, split it up into two parts, and keep the first part containing the designation. Access is equal to 1 indicates that we apply the function to every row. 0 is for column. From the frequency distribution, positions of leader and commander are targets for assassination. Next question. Who are these other terrorist groups or militias? This will involve some natural language processing. I'll create a function which takes in two arguments. Text, the textual paragraph to be analyzed, and regex, which is the type of key phrases to look out for. Initially, I combine all the content in the summary column that describes the terrorist attacks on the other terrorists and non-militia. This text is passed into the function which performs the following sequence of actions. The first is word tokenization, which breaks down the passage into constituent words, then part of speech tagging, that is, tags elements based on part of speech. I've included the link to this list and the meanings in the description below this video. Check it out later. Then we have the chunk unit. They are the phrases that you wish to recognize. I only consider phrases longer than bigrams, that is, more than two word phrases. Then we have frequency distribution. Determine the frequency of occurrence of such phrases. The most common ones are your key phrases. I wrap these four stages in a function so that we can reuse them for other NLP tasks. So combine all the text in the summary column, which has the account for every attack, and pass it into the function along with the type of key phrases we need to recognize. I want to know who these militia groups are that are fighting ISIS in the region. So I'm looking for nouns. I'm adding more description including prepositions and adjectives so that we get a well-rounded key phrase. Looks like the terrorist groups and militias that they target include Iraqi volunteer forces and volunteer fighters in Arab Abjur, Baiji district, and Bashir. Names of specific militia are not mentioned in the summary. Can we get more information on the nature of attack? To get more information about the attacks on ISIL's association with terrorist groups and militias, we parse the summary column and see what we can find. I'm looking for information along the lines of X killed Y, or X was killed. If we were to perform part of speech tagging, the equivalent chunking unit would be the big bad wolf killed the lazy fox. So I use a similar sequence of part of speech tags for creating chunks. First it's an adjective followed by nouns, then verbs, then optional determiners, and then a noun. A common method of dealing with these militias is through detonation of an explosive-laden vehicle. Another tactic is through suicide bombers either in a vehicle or strapping bombs to their person. Not all attacks were successful as we see security forces repelled the assault. So why did ISIL attack parts of Iraq? In other words, we need to explore the motive. Motive is another text-based field in our database. The recommended way of looking for key phrases in the motive would be trying to chunk words according to a pattern, like we did before. On closer inspection of the motives, however, we see that many of them are similar word for word. So we could get away with a direct frequency distribution. This approach is very specific to the current dataset. In these statements, Baghdad seems to be the center location. In 30 cases, ISIL states the bombing in and around Baghdad was retaliation for intensified security operations against insurgents in Sunni areas. So who are ISIL's targets in Baghdad? We search for the term Baghdad in the motive and retrieve the corresponding fields like target, success, success indicating the if the attack has succeeded or failed, and the attack type as mentioned before. Looks like all these attacks in Baghdad unfortunately succeeded. From the data, we observe that Shiite neighborhoods and civilians are ISIL's primary targets in the city. Which Iraqi provinces and states are most targeted by ISIL? We extract the frequency distribution of states where ISIL striked in the past. This is converted into a data frame and plotted on a bar graph using Seaborn. 
The graph shown displays the cities with the most number of terror attacks by ISIL. So here's another question. What about the number of kills since ISIL's founding in 2013? In the code, we initialize an empty data frame of place, where the attack occurred and num kills, which is the number of fatalities. For every state, we sum over the number of fatalities every year from 2013. We display the top 10 entries of the resulting populated data frame. Looks like Al Anbar, Nineveh, Saladin, and Baghdad suffer the most fatalities with at least 3,000 lives claimed in each city since 2013 by ISIL. So how has the number of fatalities varied over the course of four years, 2013 to 2016? For easier comparison, we will construct a multi-bar plot. Pandas constructs such bar plots by initially reshaping the data frame using pandas melt method. This function increases the number of rows and combines columns 2013-2016 under a common year banner. I've displayed the example output for the function after excluding some minor cities. Since there's going to be a ton of bar graphs on a single graph, I resize the chart using matplotlib's pyplot. At the time of writing this post, there is no way to vary plot sizes in Seaborn. Let's take a look at this graph. Although the number of fatalities in Nineveh is less than that of Al Anbar, many more people have died in Nineveh than any other city by far in 2016. Al Anbar actually saw more fatalities in the previous year. In this way, we can go on answering questions by analyzing data for a single terror group in a single country. I thought this was a better approach than just taking a bird's eye view of the entire data set. We were able to get some insight on a handful of questions. Hope you guys got something out of this data analysis. All the code will be posted on GitHub. The link will be in the description below the video. So let me know the type of video that you guys want to see in the future. If you like what you saw, click that subscribe button for more awesome content and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.